there, Yarny friends. I'm Sarah, and welcome or welcome back to my crochet channel. Today's video, I'm going to show you how to crochet the super easy stadium cushion seat. It measures about 14 by 14 inches, so it's a nice size to take along and toss in the car. It's perfect for the mom or dad that's on the go, always going to football games, play performances, band performances, and getting stuck sitting in those metal chairs and bleachers. It's perfect. And you can make this in your school colors or your favorite team colors. And it's also a great yarn stash buster because you can use medium weight number four yarns. I used two strands held together with just some leftover yarns that I had from years ago. I used up those scratchy yarns to make something useful. <laughs> now you can find this crochet pattern on my blog. And as always, I'll put that blog link down in the notes underneath this video. To make the stadium cushion seat, you're going to need some poly foam. I purchased this. It's a two pack. It's a 12 by 12 by one. And it's one inch thick. There's two of them in here. And you can see it was only $3.99. I purchased this at my local Walmart. You can also get these at any craft store. Joann's, Hobby Lobby, Michael's, they all have these. And um, they're super easy to work with and inexpensive. I can make two stadium seats with this package because there's two in there. Now, if you don't want to purchase a foam poly cushion, you can use some old towels to use as your cushion, or maybe you've got an old flannel blanket or just an old blanket that you don't want to use anymore. You can fold it up into a 12 by 12 and use that as well. Okay, I just really like using this because it's all ready to go. Now, we're going to be using medium weight number four yarns, but we're going to be holding two strands together. And so I'm going to be using this sort of sage green. It's kind of a dark mint. And I'm going to be holding two strands of this together. And then I've also got this cranberry and I'll be holding two strands of that together. Don't worry, I'll explain how to do that. It's really super easy. But if you don't want to use your medium weight number four yarn, because I, I like to use it because it works great for using up leftover um, yarns and making something useful out of it. Another thing that you can do is if you have some bulky number six yarns, you can use that and just use one strand. You're going to need a total of seven ounces. You'll need three and a half of one color and three and a half of another color or a total of seven of one color or a whole bunch of colors. You can just get in your yarn stash and use up all your leftover yarns. We're going to be stitching with an L hook today. That's an 8.0 millimeter crochet hook. And then the only other thing you need is your scissors and a needle for weaving in ends. When you're crocheting, holding two strands of yarn together, there are a couple of different ways that you can do that. My favorite way is just to roll it into two balls and put it in a container like this one. That way I can easily pull that out and hold the two strands together. Another way that I do sometimes, if I just have the one skein, then I pull from the outside and the inside and stitch that way. A lot of times I'll take this and drop it into a bowl on the ground. That way I can pull it out easier. It does work, but it's not my favorite way to do it. To make our cushion, we're going to make two squares and then we'll put the two squares together and stitch around it to close it up. So I've got my two strands. I'm beginning with my sort of sage mint green color here. I'm going to start with my slip knot and I'm going to loosely chain 26 chains. The reason we do this a little bit loose is we don't want the end of it to be puckered up. We want it to have plenty of room at the bottom. 
All right, now when we stitch with two strands, we think of it as just one. And we just do our chains. A lot of times I'll pull it out, I'll smooth it out and keep going. And we need to chain 26 chains. I have chained loosely my 26 chains. And now we're going to begin by placing a double crochet in the fourth chain from the hook. We don't count the loop on our hook. One, two, three, four. Yarn over, go in, pull up a loop. Yarn over, go through the first two loops. Yarn over and go through the second two loops. Our chain three here will count as one, and then we stitched one double crochet. And we're going to stitch one double crochet in each of those remaining chains. This project will work up quick because most of our stitching will be in double crochets. So, one double crochet in each of our chains working all the way across this row. I stitched one double crochet in each of my chains across and we're counting this chain three as one and then you should have a total of 24 double crochets. We're going to chain three and turn. Our chain three counts as our first double crochet. So we're not going to stitch in this first stitch. We're going to begin stitching double crochets starting in the second chain and then in each of those double crochets across. One double crochet in each of the double crochets across. See, I told you this is going to be super easy. I completed row two. Our chain three counted as one and I stitched one double crochet in each double crochet across. So I have a total again of 24 double crochets and each row that we do will have a total of 24 double crochets. Now I did not chain three and that's because I'm changing colors. When you're changing colors, make sure you bring your new color in first and then do your chain three. There we go. Snug those things down. And now we're going to turn our work. We're going to leave our green or our color one attached. We'll just move it out of the way when we're not using it. And then we'll use our second color. Now remember, you can change colors as often as you want to for your cushion. And when you do that, make sure you do it at the end of a row if possible. And chain three after the color change. And now for row three, we're just going to repeat what we did for row two. The chain three counts as our first stitch. So we'll go in the next stitch and stitch a double crochet. And then we'll stitch one double crochet in each of those stitches working all the way across. Alrighty, so one double crochet in each of the double crochets all the way across. I completed row three, one double crochet in each double crochet, and I am going to chain three because I'm not changing colors here. So there's my chain three. I'm going to turn my work and then just repeat what we did on row three. Our chain three counts as our first double crochet and then we're going to double crochet in each of the stitches going across. One double crochet in each double crochet across our row. I completed row four and again we have 24 stitches on each row. Now I didn't chain three because I'm going to bring my green yarn back up and we'll trail our yarn up the side here 
and then chain three. And again, you can change colors whenever you want to, as many rows as you want to. Just make sure you do that chain three after your color change. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to continue to repeat row four for eight more rows. And then we'll alternate every two rows of color. We have two rows of green, then two rows of this cranberry red. And then we'll continue with the green, red, green, red until we have a total of 12 rows. We've done four, so we need to do eight more rows of one double crochet in each double crochet across, chain three, and turn. And again, I'm alternating my colors every two rows. I stitch those eight additional rows, so I have two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve rows of one double crochet in each stitch, chain three, and turn, and then I changed colors every two rows. And again, you can change colors as often as you want, or not at all. I took my needle and went ahead and weaved in all the ends, of course, except this one, because we're going to leave this one attached. And you will notice on this side is where we carried all our yarn up the side. Now, this next row, we're going to do just an even row of single crochet around the edge of our square. And that's going to tidy it up a little bit. So when I finished my last double crochet, I chained one and turned. I'm going to bring my camera in a little closer so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, we're going to evenly single crochet down this first side and we're going to make sure we stitch over these areas where we trailed our yarn. And the easiest way to get a nice even row is to make sure we go in the sides of the stitches and we're stitching single crochets. And we want to try to go in the sides of those double crochets and not those holes and that'll give us a much neater appearance. So we're just stitching evenly single crochets down the side and when we go uh, get to those parts of yarn where we trailed up we want to make sure that we stitch that single crochet around it so we're covering up those trails of yarn. There is not a set amount of single crochet stitches you need for the outside. You just want to make it look as neat as possible and stitch around those trails of yarn, trying your best to go in the sides of the stitches. Now there might be a part where you don't have a place to put that stitch and you have to go in that hole, but you want to try not to. It just gives it a much better appearance if you don't. All right, so we're going to single crochet down the side and then place two single crochets in this corner. I finished stitching my single crochets evenly down the first side. I'm to the corner and I've stitched one stitch and I'm going to stitch a second one right in that corner. And now I can just stitch my stitches in this beginning chain where we started and it'll make a nice even row across the bottom. All right, and so then what we'll do is we'll stitch across, we'll stitch two single crochets in this corner, we'll evenly stitch up this side to this corner, two single crochets, and then evenly single crochet across the top and join in back where we started. So just an even row of single crochet all the way around, all four sides, placing two single crochets in each corner. So I have evenly single crocheted all the way around all four sides, placing two single crochets in each of the four corners. I need to do a second one here. And then I'll join to this first single crochet with a slip stitch. You need to make sure you have two squares. I have two squares. One I trimmed with my green, the other one I trimmed with the cranberry. And I stitched them 
differently <laughs> just for fun but they still have two rows of each color and i did that on purpose just for fun just to show you you don't have to do it the same way that i did all right so now we're going to stitch the two squares together so we'll take them and put the right sides out and we'll lay them together and the first square I tied off the green end on the second square I left it attached because we're going to use that to stitch around our cushion now you can tie this off and use another color if you want to it's totally up to you all right so what we'll do is I'm going to go ahead and make a chain one just to get me up where I need to be and then we'll put our side together we'll go in the first single crochet on this side and the first single crochet on this side and stitch a single crochet now one of the things you might run into as you're stitching up the side is you may have more stitches on one side than the other so what you can do when you're doing your squares is count how many stitches you put on this side and make sure you put that same number on this side as well all right but what i do is i just line it up and make sure that I'm stitching each stitch and if I end up with an extra one or two I will just put an extra stitch in the main thing is you want to be able to close it up so that your sponge or whatever type of stuffing you're going to put in your cushion seat doesn't come out just make sure everything stays lined up and we're just single crocheting the front and the back pieces together to form our cushion and we're not going to be adding any extra stitches in the corners we're just going to work right around those corners all right so i'm almost to this corner and so we'll just keep going around everything seems to be lining up nicely and i just wanted to show you this corner because we're just going to smoothly move around the corner i'm going to turn this we're not adding any extra stitches in the corners we're just moving right around the corner making sure everything stays lined up and see how that works and it lays nice and pretty all right so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to stitch across the top moving around the corner and down to the bottom we're going to leave this open to put our cushion inside and then we'll close this up so i'm going to continue stitching my front and back pieces together around these next two sides just like we did here i stitched all the way around the three sides i didn't add any extra stitches in the corners i just went around and now we're going to put the stuffing inside all right so what i do is i take it and i fold it in half and I put it inside, moving it up as best as I can, trying to get the corner in, and then I get the corner in on this side. There we go. <clears throat> Getting it to lay as smooth as possible. The sponge stuff is difficult to get in because it wants to stick to everything, so you just got to kind of work it up. And so now we're just going to continue what we were doing with stitching the front and back together. And you may have to push it in a little bit, but you can adjust it once it's in there. All right, so we'll just go right to that next stitch and keep working around, stitching single crochets, stitching the front and the back together. so i have my cushion inside and i continue to stitch my single crochets around stitching the front and back together 
So I'm at this corner. Here's my last single crochet. I'm going to join to that first one with a slip stitch and then I'm going to chain 20 chains. One, two, get in there. <laughs> Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And I'm going to join right back to that same single crochet with a slip stitch. All right, and now we're going to just single crochet around this chain. And this is gonna make a nice sturdy handle. So we'll just go around and we're going to stitch 22 single crochets. So one, two, three, four, I stitched 22 single crochets around that chain and now what we're going to do is we're just going to join that to the next single crochet over here with a slip stitch and then we're going to join in the next one and that's going to make it nice and secure and then clip that off and tie that off. And then we'll take our needle and make sure that is securely woven in. And that's going to give us a nice handle to carry our cushion with us where we need to go. And so now my stadium cushion seat is all ready for me to take with me to go watch the band play or the football team win their game.